Lyle Bitwit. Racist? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's messed up. Welcome back to CompTV, a place you can go for all things tech. I'm Lee, and something you haven't seen me do before here is kind of give professional advice based on what I do for a living. If you didn't already know, I work as an application developer, so I thought it would be fun to take a look at some tech tubers websites and give some feedback, maybe some changes that I would make, and overall just see what I think about them as a professional. So let's dig right in. All right, so we're starting here with Bitwit's website, and it looks like this is just a store, right? I see a home button. What's this home button do? Oh, pfft. I cannot brain today. I has the dumb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is very like bitwit esque. Wait, is there more things here? So a slider that doesn't slide. All right. Sorry, but that's going to be putting you in the negatives. We're starting off on the wrong foot here. Also, the store is the front page technically, even though there's a home button. So I'm guessing that maybe the main thing he's trying to promote is the store. That makes sense. It's to the point. Um, I'm not going to knock off any points for that, but these probably work, right? Yeah, this makes sense. He's going to have certain videos that he wants people to see. Well, this hasn't been updated since 2016, so. Never mind. Maybe that's not true. Um, awesome hardware though. Love that show. So a link to Twitch. Uh, looks like an Insta feed. Yep, Instagram feed. Patreon link. Uh, some broken tweets. So I guess this is mostly just a store, and I think it accomplishes its mission. It doesn't draw too much attention to this homepage, which makes sense because it doesn't look like it's been updated in a while. I'm not gonna knock the design. It is very simple, but at the same time, first off, I'm not a designer. I do have design opinions. I think I could design a website, but it's not really what I do mainly, so I can't say too much about the design. I think it gets to the point. It's simple enough, and I'm sure it's probably easy to check out. Let's, I guess, can we test that? Let's say I wanted to buy this shirt. Add to cart. Unable to add option. Oh, okay. Add to cart. Item. All right. So again, it looks like this is mainly just trying to be a uh, an e-commerce website. They want to sell stuff, and it looks like that is that's its main function. And honestly, this checkout page looks pretty good too. So all in all, it looks like it's a pretty decent site, if I had to say so myself. Okay. So the next site up is Deal Source. This is from Ed from Tech Source. This is apparently a page you can go to find cheap deals on tech on Amazon. So let's check it out. So, so far so good. I mean, that's pretty nice. I think what you'll find is that it's common for the header to be sticky nowadays. And what that basically means is I'll actually go ahead and open up my editor. I don't know if this is weird to do, but you're going to go ahead and see me do what I do. So this is kind of what that would look like. And as you can see, it looks like it did before. But as I start scrolling, this header is actually stuck to the top. I feel like that's just a better user experience because we're kind of used to that on our phones now that when we scroll through, we can easily get back to the navigation. Speaking of the navigation, though, another thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that there's some letter spacing in between these words. So as you can see right here, what I did was I just got rid of some of that letter spacing. And all that is, is it's the space between letters. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. And as you can see, I think that honestly looks better. I can actually toggle this using the tool that I was using to uh, edit this. So here's what it looks like if I toggle between the two. I just feel like this tighter letter spacing is a little bit better. And actually, I think you could even take more out if you wanted it to be a little bit more compact. And I feel like it just adds to the aesthetic. You can see again, I'll just toggle that again. That's what it looked like before. But other than those basic design things, I think pretty much everything else is pretty straightforward. It's not really presenting anything special, like more information. Let's see, there's a deals page. There's a submit deals page. Let's check that out. So it looks like here's just a basic form. I think maybe I would have matched the height of these boxes to look like these ones. So it looked like kind of like a little bit more boxy, but you know, that's just a design thing again. And if I go back to the store, it looks like I guess only sometimes he puts products on here. So that makes sense. Maybe I would just get rid of the store tab if there was no one that could actually add items to a cart. And in that same vein, maybe remove the cart button so that it just had deals and submit deals. But I don't know, maybe that gets updated more frequently than I'm thinking. So who knows? So yeah, it looks like the rest of this website is really, again, just kind of like an e-commerce type site. It's just wanting you to click through to Amazon and purchase products. And as long as it's providing deals, it looks like a cool site to me. It's simple. It's to the point, you know, other than those small design things. Actually, you know what? There's one more design change I would make. If you're really trying to emphasize something, you tend to want to make it bigger. And I think if you look at the text of the price, they're actually a little small in comparison to everything else around it. So as you can see, this is a little small thing. This isn't necessarily perfect. This is just a proof of concept, but I think it would make more sense to actually emphasize the pricing, right? Because you want people to go, wow, I can save a hundred dollars on some of these things. Like right here, I can save $70 on this 1440p monitor 
Or as you scroll down, some of these deals look even better, right? Like, oh wow, I'm saving $200 off of a S10. And here, I think if you make this slight little adjustment, it makes more sense to the flow of the website. But again, to wrap up, I think this site does its job well and it could be much, much worse. I think it seems to be perfectly usable and it's basic, simple layout. So thumbs up, Ed. Dealsourcemedia at gmail.com. Nice. All right, so next up is Paul's Hardware and <laughs> Deja Vu. I know Paul and Kyle are friends. Wait, does Lyle have a website? If Lyle has a website, I wanna check out Lyle's website. Let's Google this. Lyle bit what? racist <laughs> what <laughs> that's messed up site oh well nope just the verge's pc video all right so it doesn't look like lyle has a site but if he did i'm guessing it probably looks something like this oh man no but it's really cool to see them work together and it really makes sense again if it's working for kyle um why not take that idea and here again it's the same thing in some ways i like the layout of this a little bit better shots fired shots fired because it has little things like the home button is actually where the main store is instead of having a separate home button. I'm sure that's probably like a little setting thing that's easy to update. But again, as long as the site is accomplishing its purpose, that's really all that matters. So this is cool. There's a little filters thing here. I can click through decals, drinkware, hoodies, polos. That's a pretty sick polo. I'm guessing t-shirts is where he makes the bulk of his money. But if I had to guess, if I clicked on something, it'd probably be the same. Yeah, the same exact checkout process as the last one. So that's cool. He's got other tabs like store info. So he's supplying more information on this page again it's just text and it's laid out in a way that you can read if you need it to it's nothing too crazy this is actually really nice he's supplying more information about the shirts and the specificity of those so yeah all in all it's a great site i think in some ways he might have even improved on kyle's original site maybe kyle even stole from paul hmm, does anyone know let me know in the comments who did this design first all right we had to throw someone from the tech fam in next up is jd from jd tech gear this is his website. Obviously, technology is beautiful and JD, so is your website. If you scroll through, it's a very simple, lots of white space. And all that means is that blank space between content. Um, and that's to emphasize the background. Here it's a video, here it was his logo. You know, obviously this, this does the job. It's got big, nice, pretty links. This is obviously more of a website than the last few. The last few were more like shops again so i think he nailed it i think his design is awesome really he kind of did his own thing and you can tell you can see it you can experience it for yourself by going to jdtechgear.com and i think he did a really good job and here it seems like he's focusing on his content he's kind of summarizing who he is this is a nice little animation he's got all his social links at the top it looks like he might even have merchandise here too all right well his merch is empty he might be outsourcing his merch somewhere else so i'm curious about that as you can see it's powered by squarespace down here as a web developer uh, squarespace does a lot to make it easy to make beautiful websites to be honest the only downside i guess is that you kind of tend to sacrifice the customizability is that a word? The customization options you're given can sometimes be less than if you were to use other options or if you were to just do it yourself from scratch. Obviously, to pay someone to do it might be the most expensive option, but sometimes, depending on your situation, it's worth it, especially if your website is integral to what you're doing. And especially when you look at most of the people we've looked at today so far, I don't think their website is the core of their business. It might be really helpful, but obviously they're YouTubers, so the YouTube videos that they create are the core of their business. But in the case that your store might be your only source of income, obviously it's really important that you have your website nailed down. But all things considered, these guys have done a really great job making sure that their sites look great. And obviously JD, again, nailed it. Whoa, this is insane. He's got an infographic of himself. That is really sick. Media deck. Cool. Support? Ooh. Donate, Amazon shop. Yeah, nice, cool links. I mean, awesome, gorgeous pages. I love these headers. Uh, these header images look really good. His text is nice and big. It's easy to read. I like those things. Obviously you can always zoom in and out of stuff, but when it's the right size to begin with, it's always nice. He even has something similar to what we've seen in the last few sites here is he has some hardware recommendations, which is kind of cool. And he says, yes, these are affiliated links with Amazon. <laughs> so he's upfront about it, which is cool, but yeah. All in all, I think this is a gorgeous website. I think it, again, it accomplishes its purpose. It's hard to compare these to the last few because it's apples and oranges, but in terms of content creators' websites, honestly, this is one of the best that I've seen. So great job on you, JD. I'm not sure if he does programming professionally, but I wouldn't be surprised if he dabbled in it um, on top of what he did for content creation because this looks really good. And last but certainly not least, we're looking at my site. <laughs> 
If you didn't already know, comptv.tech is a website and it also has a lot of subdomains that lead to other things that I offer. Uh, links are probably in the description. One of the main ones is reddit.com comptv.tech and that is the tech hub that we use to aggregate content for this channel and it's really cool because I get to interact with the community and the comment section below is just as good for that so feel free if you're not a redditor you don't have to check that out but if you do like reddit I smacked my mic feel free to check that out and to submit your content there but here it's similar to uh, what we were talking about before but it's straightforward it's to the point as you can see I like my white space and you can link directly to my Twitch, my Twitter, or my YouTube. And obviously you can welcome back to the place you can go for all things tech. And um, yeah, so that's my site. I feel like this kind of sums up a lot of what I said already today. So I feel like this is a good way to end this version. I know there's a lot more websites that I haven't checked out yet. If you have some suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, but I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Maybe you learned a thing or two. Maybe you disagreed with me. If you did, let me know that below as well. And uh, I think that pretty much covers everything. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm Lee from CompTV. Again.